Hi, this is Adam Myers, Director of Intelligence for CrowdStrike. I'm going to provide a quick demonstration of getting CrowdRE set up so that you can augment your reversing with the power of the crowd. What is CrowdRE? Well, imagine you have a very large or complicated piece of malware. Flame or Stuxnet are prime examples. And you want to reverse engineer it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. How did the authors develop this malware? Well, they probably used a source code repository to collectively build it. So the team at CrowdStrike thought we would use a similar methodology to unbuild it. This is especially useful when you have teams of researchers collaborating on one particular piece of code, such as the aforementioned malware. The basic premise is similar to a conventional software engineering process, where you write a module, you check in your code, and that shares it to the other contributors. Similarly with CrowdRE, you reverse engineer a function, annotate it, and check it in. Today, I'll provide a quick walkthrough on setting up CrowdRE. We will regularly post additional information on the blog at blog.crowdstrike.com for about various uses and, and ways to use the tool. So first, we need to log in to the uh, CrowdRE site, which is located at crowd.re. You can see here we are leveraging Google's OAuth 2 to limit the need to remember any additional authentication credentials. You can revoke access at any time in the settings on your Google account. And if you're really uncomfortable about this, just create a new Gmail account for CrowdRE. You won't hurt our feelings. Once you're authenticated, you see a clean, simple interface. Immediately, you will see the option to download client, which will deliver a compressed archive. Inside this archive, you will find the end user license agreement, a readme, two IDA plugins, and a certificate. I will use a Mac plugin in this example. I've staged it locally on the Mac, and I will go to wherever IDA is installed and go to the IDA binaries folder. I will place the CrowdRE plugin into the plugins folder. All right, so we're ready to start using CrowdRE. I've opened IDA Pro, and you can see I'm about to load one of the two IDB files that I intend to analyze in this example. Once the file opens, I will hit Control F2 to bring up the CrowdRE interface. You can see here, it's requesting a login authentication token. The way that we create a login authentication token is to use the CrowdRE UI located at crowd.re. To create an authentication token, simply press the plus sign next to the authentication tokens and you will see it generate an authentication token. Simply copy this authentication token into the CrowdRE dialog inside of the IDA Pro plugin and it will now allow you to use CrowdRE. I'm going to create a group for my annotation because I don't want this to be shared with just anyone. I will create a Zeus research group, which I can add additional researchers to later. The preferred way to use the CrowdRE plugin is to move it over to an area in the screen where it will be most accessible. To do this, I will put it over on the left pane, which is where I prefer to keep it, where I can still view functions that I want to look at, as well as the CrowdRE plugin. The first thing I want to do, because this is a fully annotated IDB, is to upload my annotations. The way I'll upload my annotations is that I will sort by name to look for the functions that I've already named in the IDB. Things including bot info message box, decryption routines, config locations, and various other things. It will be rc4crypt, which we will look at after. I'm going to share this to the Zeus Research Group because I want to keep these annotations only to the people in that group. And here I can put a helpful comment about the annotation and upload the annotations. You can now see that the author and the group and all of the function matching that's already occurred. So it's now matched the functions to this particular IDB. Obviously, that's not very helpful, but when we look at a second IDB, I think you'll see where this becomes really useful. I will now open the other non-annotated Zeus file. Once the file is open, I will again press Control F2 to bring up the CrowdRE plugin. Again, I will move the CrowdRE plugin to my preferred location, and I will now try to see if I can get any sort of matching in this new IDB. I will click on the Batch Import Annotations button, which will send a request to the server 
and allow me to select either fuzzy matching or exact matching. There's no exact matches, but under fuzzy matching, we can see that an author named Mad Boo has supplied into the Zeus Research Group, of which I'm a member, several functions. These functions uh, are currently called this, though in the cloud you could see they're actually called copy heap to buffer, rc4 crypt, etc. What I will do is import these annotations, and you will see them automatically populate in the function window inside of item pro. Now we could simply click on the rc4 crypt function, track it within the item pro window, and now if I use the hex rays plugin, I can really easily see the rc4 crypt function, the input that goes into it, as well as what occurs inside of that function. Thus, I'm able to quickly understand a new Zeus file by using the CrowdRE plugin to do fuzzy function matching in order to understand how this binary works. We have a lot of features we will be adding in the coming weeks. As you may have noticed, this release is still alpha. We wanted to get this tool out to the community as early as possible so we could incorporate your feedback. So please don't be shy with the feedback button on the web UI. This is a community tool and we at CrowdStrike are committed to populate our annotations into the cloud as well. And we hope you will join us because only through information sharing and collaboration among the security industry can we start to effectively fight our adversaries. They themselves are sharing and collaborating. Shouldn't the security community do the same? Thank you for watching, and please remember to follow us on Twitter and to check the blog for regular updates.